The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today here at Christ our Savior Lutheran Church for the full counsel of God, word, and prayer. Today we're continuing the book of Acts. We have chapters 10 and 11 today on this 24th day of the month. Well, let's hear God's word together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. Please show us now your ways, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us, give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and we shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verses 1 through 8 in chapter 10, Peter and Cornelius. At Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon a Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended to him. And having relay, related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. So far the word. The Lord prepares Cornelius to learn more about Jesus. Likewise, he prepares and guides our lives in accordance with his good purposes. Therefore, commend your life and your ways to your Lord, who at all times has you in his heart. We pray. Father, your law reminds me daily that as good as I think I am, I can never be good enough to inherit eternal salvation. Thank you for sending Jesus to fulfill all righteousness for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Continue now, verses 9 through 33, entitled, Peter's Vision. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance, and he saw the heavens open, and something like a great sheet descended, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Now while Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision that he had seen might mean, Behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate and called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise, go down, and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you, to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. And he invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then, why you sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, 
and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa, and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So far the word. Through a vision, the Lord teaches Peter that holiness is not determined by people, but by what God himself has ordained as holy and clean. We, you and I, we are powerless to hallow anything. Pray that God's gift and blessings may be hallowing among us, hallowed among us. Through the gospel, the Lord cleanses us and he makes us holy. We pray, Father, thank you for making me righteous and acceptable through your word. Let your Holy Spirit move me to confess Christ, that others might be made acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Continuing now at verse 34, Gentiles hear the good news. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who, fear, who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and of the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So far the word. Peter affirms for devout Cornelius that Jesus is truly the Christ. The Spirit affirms for Peter that the gospel applies to all people without partiality. The Holy Spirit unites one and all in the body of Christ. We pray. Father, thank you for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Make me a faithful witness of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. The balance of chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. So far the word. The Holy Spirit demonstrates to the Jewish believers that God indeed desires to pour out his Spirit on all flesh, even the Gentiles. The water, the word, and the Holy Spirit go together. So Peter urges that the Gentiles be baptized right away without concern for circumcision or ritual purity, according to the Old Covenant. These blessings of word and sacrament abide with us today. We pray, Lord, give us your word that our thankfulness points, our thankfulness points many to your grace. In your name we pray. Amen. We now continue into chapter 11. Peter reports to the church. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. So Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to me. Now looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. 
But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to me from Caesarea, and the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remember the words of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. So far the word. Through the law, God condemns all sinners and drives them to repentance. Through the gospel, he grants life everlasting. Live a life of daily repentance. Through the gospel, he grants life everlasting. So live a life of daily repentance. And glorify God for his lavish blessings and gifts to you and to all people. We pray, Lord, let our likeness to some not be a barrier to others. Draw everyone to you. O Holy Spirit, even the unlikely. In Jesus' name. Now the balance of the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 19, the church in Antioch. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Now in these days prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world, which took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea, and they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So far the word of the Lord. Through persecution, though persecution scatters the believers, the Lord uses the persecution to proclaim the gospel even more broadly. As believers grow in faith, they commit themselves to acts of service, men of God such as Barnabas not only confirmed the work of the Holy Spirit among believers, but also ensure that new believers are nurtured in the faith through instruction. We pray. Awake, thou Spirit, who didst fire the watchmen of the church's youth, who faced the foes in Vemendia, who witnessed day and night thy truth, whose voices loud are ringing still, and bringing hosts to know thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue in prayer for this 24th day of the month for the Pray for Us calendar. We pray for those who suffer from battle stress and post-traumatic stress disorder. We pray that God would bring them healing and renewal for those who have served or who are currently serving. In Jesus' name, amen. The prayer of the church. Merciful Father, you have wounded your own son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind and those dying and all those we now name to you in our hearts. As well as Art and Rick, Melissa and Clifford, Art and Helen, Mary Ann, Karen, James, George, Bonnie, Marilyn, Chris, and Colleen. 
In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.